All right, everybody, welcome to Rana's Radar. Now, I have been reading the comments. I'm back here at Restoration Warehouse. I heard you guys, you all want prices. Fair enough. So I'm back here with Ace, and we're going to look at a few of these beautiful cars behind me with prices this time. I know so many of you have mentioned that, and here I am back at it. So let's get some prices and some more of these cars in absolute detail for those of you who are really interested in purchasing your own classic car in this new 2024. Ace, so good to see you again. So great to have you back here again. So. Thank you for letting me come <laughs> yes. back here. <laughs> You're always welcome here. Thank you. And you know, people love the video. And yes. There were so many positive comments as well. And one of the complaints that many, many had was they want to see more prices. I understand. And, you know, that day we were just trying to showcase the cars, showcase what we're doing here. And, and honestly, it's kind of hard for me to keep up with some of the prices of, and I mean, I never, we've got everything. And I never said to you, you know what, let's go and see some um, the prices. I didn't right. do that. It was more vlog style for my own curiosity to see what's <laughs> happening here. Yes. And I'm not in the market for one. So I guess from my point of view, I wasn't so interested in finding out the prices. Right. You know, in a couple of years or so, then I might be saying, okay, give me the exact price of this, and right. maybe then it would be a different video. But I noticed that my viewers out there were very curious on the prices. Yes. Now, we do have a little bit of a different setup. Yes, we've kind of Beautiful. changed some cars around, and we've added to some new stuff. So, bringing in 2024 pretty strong, starting off with a 66 Pontiac GTO convertible. Um, this car is a true 389 tri-power car, power windows, factory AC. Now you're not gonna see all those options still on this car. Um, what's really neat about this car now, it does have a five-speed five, five conversion done to it. It does have fuel injection on it now. We do have the original intake and carburetor, so somebody really wants to put it all back completely stock, the previous owner. He wanted something real driver friendly, and this was, he had a GTO back in high school, um, found this car from another friend of his, purchased it, and they decided, hey, let's add fuel injection, let's add a five speed to it, um, but it has had a handcrafted uh, breather, so it kind of still appears as the three deuce setup, but like I said, we do have the original intake and the numbers matching carburetors that go with it. That is the correct air compressor for the car. Um, so the one of the families that owned this car, they owned it for 25 years. Um, it was a true body off restoration. Uh, this car was painted and done in the late 90s, early 2000s, and it's been, wow. paint and body has been done since before 2005 on this car. So, obviously looks like it's been kept very well yes. in a climate controlled garage nonetheless. But it's also been enjoyed. This car has been driven, enjoyed, you know, it's it's seen rain. It's seen I'm not gonna tell you that this car has just been put up. They wanted to enjoy these cars and that's what our ultimate goal is is to find what you want and what you're looking for. You want a full blown show car, you want something to enjoy on the weekends and put some miles on it. This would be one of the cars right here. Okay, so all right. That's the facts. <laughs> GTO. Yeah. The year. 66. 66 GTO. Yep. And it has been fully restored. Yes. Beautifully done. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks absolutely in perfect condition from where I'm standing. <laughs> what is the price on this today? Now, this is January 2024. That's right. And uh, so the price on this car is 115. 115. Yep. And um, just to keep let everybody know, this video obviously will be here for quite some time. Yes. Maybe it will get sold. Maybe the price will change in a few months. Exactly. But as of now, January 2020, 2024. <laughs> yeah. i got to get used to saying that. This is 115. Yep, it is. And if you want to check for all of our prices, please visit RestoWarehouse.com. Now, um, there was a little glitch on the website a few, um, a month ago or so. Yes. Where we kept saying email for prices, but that's not there anymore. That, that is not there anymore. Every vehicle should be listed with prices. <laughs> we, like she said, we did have a glitch and everything went to email only. We lost some pictures. So we've been working on that to make sure that everything is working properly on our website. It was a very bad timing because the time yes. this video came out and so many people <laughs> started to inquire about it, that happened. But nonetheless, that has been fixed. There's the price on the beautiful GTO. Yes. Let's continue along, Ace. Now, we did like the Chevelle. Yes. Uh, who, who doesn't like a red 
big block Chevelle. So this is a 1968 SS 396 car. Uh, as we touched on in the last video, this is a California car. It was a lady owned car. Uh, I think we've got pictures of all the documentation of this car being in California. I've got dual sets of plates. I've got the original black plates and I have brand new 09 plates that have never been on the car from California. Um, it is a automatic column shift, factory AC, factory power steering car, which are rare options for a convertible back in 68. Um, we have added the power brakes on the car, um, but Honestly, besides the wheel change and the power brakes, that's it. We do have the original hubcaps, the wire hubcaps that were an option back then. We have those with the steel wheels and the red line tires. Um, so if you want to put the car completely back stock, but we wanted to do a little bit of a, uh, you know, just kind of change the car up a little bit. So we put brand new Americans on it. Um, you know, it'd be kind of period correct for back then if you would have bought the car and want to change your wheels almost immediately back then. Um, let's see, what else about this car? As far as I can tell, the interior seems to be pretty much completely original. If it's not, it has been done a very long time. Um, the restoration on this car was done in 2009, and it was not a body off restoration, it was literally a paint job is what it was and if I'm not mistaken in the story that the grandson of the lady that owned it he is the one that did the restoration on the car nice. so um, I flipped through the book as well yeah. and I love that there was even um, paint satchels there as well yeah all your codes of you know what the two family owned since new um, everything the California black plates, factory air conditioning, what code each was. Um, here is still in the package, the brand new 2009 plates for it. So there, there's a lot of documentation that goes along with this car. We've had this car for quite a few years now. So uh, yeah. It's so beautiful, you, it's in great condition. 68 yeah. Chevelle Super Sport. Yes. So price tag on this car, $69,000. It is a driver car. It is very nice up underneath it. You can enjoy this car. That is what we are trying to do here is have, you know, people get what they want, what they're looking for. Reach out to me and let me help you find that. Beautiful. I, I mean, I like that price tag. <laughs> yes. I like that price tag. I'm building something, but that is a very sweet price tag for yes. a car that is just absolutely road perfect, ready to roll out, ready yeah. to drive out. Exactly. Beautiful. Let's check out some trucks. Okay. We all love trucks. Let's check yeah. out some trucks. <laughs> all right. What do you want to start with? Let's look at the Silverado here. Okay. This is a 1982 Silverado factory short bed truck. Um, it does have a 383 stroker motor in it. It does have a 700 R4 automatic. So it means it's got overdrive. It has AC, power steering, power brakes. Um, AC works wonderful in this truck. It is You've a had blast. personal experience? Yes. I, <laughs> this truck is a blast to drive in the summertime. Um, it's had a positive track rear end put in it. Uh, the rear end has been built up a little bit more to hold a little bit more power to it. Brand new 20 inch wheels on the truck. It's got a nice paint job. Um, again, just a great driver. Little pickup truck. And these square bodies are just so popular right now. Oh, they really are. Yeah. It's got a uh, beautiful burgundy interior, power windows, power locks, tilt wheel. Um, just a nice truck. Great little stereo system in it. Beautiful. Yes. Headliner, everything is complete. Again, yeah. it's ready to go. What about the bed? Uh, the bed is all nicely done. Um, bed cover. Um, it's had a roll pan done to it. I mean, it, it's really a super solid little truck up underneath it. And again, this is another vehicle that we've had for multiple years now. And, uh, you know, a lot of these have been more uh, toys for us of just cruising around to car shows, enjoying, before we ever decided to really start getting into selling vehicles and stuff. So that's why this one and like the Chevelle have been a part of the collection for a little while now. Well, it's a great time to sell it because there's a huge market out there. Yes. The square bodies, the love of it is just gone. Right. It's just skyrocketed, especially <laughs> yes. in the last year or so. 
What are we looking at here for this? So on this truck, we're asking 32.5 for this truck. So, uh, you know, you couldn't do the motor and transmission and wheels and, you know, I'm sure there might be something that you might want to change on this truck, but this is a truck that you could get in right now and drive about anywhere you'd want. There you go. There you go. Now, let's continue along. The 72 Chevy, <laughs> that was popular as well. The, I know I liked it. This truck kind of speaks for itself. It's red, it's low to the ground, really nice wheels, beautiful engine bay, very custom interior. So um, this truck, 72, factory short bed, factory 400 truck. This is a 400 small block, but it has been fully built, went through. It's got a good cam in it, does have power steering. It has power disc brakes on it now, four-wheel disc brakes actually all the way around, wheel woods. Um, you know, just a super nice little truck. Automatic, all the interior in this truck. It, it's worth showing off that one of my favorite details that the floor mats have been recessed into the flooring on this truck. Bucket seats, um, automatic genie shifter in it. Billet specialty wheel, um, classic instrument gauges. And another thing that I like to brag about vehicles that have been done for a long time, this truck's been done a little over 15 to almost 20 years. Wow. Um, so it's only had 100 miles put on it in about those 15 years. So what's the mileage now? Let's see. Should show right there. Is that 105 miles? 105 miles. <laughs> yes, in wow. around 15 years. Um, 1972 Chevy C10. Yes, and it has been, you now, know. this is the Cheyenne as well. It's yes. the Cheyenne Super 10. Correct. Which was the top of the line. Right. In 1972. And now it's even more of the top of the line. Um, it's got a full painted chassis, three inch exhaust on it with electric cutouts. Again, Willwood disc brakes all the way around. The rear wheels are 20 by 16s, and they are a true three-piece wheel. The fronts are 20 by 8s, and they are a three-piece wheel as well. Um, it's had LED lighting put all the way around on this truck. Um, it's just a fabulous, even in here, like if you want to store chairs or your detailing products, it's completely closed off. Oh, so no okay. water, no nothing, you know, if you're going to a car show or something like that. So what's underneath it? What, what's the bed? Is it rubber or? So actually it's all spray and bed liner behind these hidden panels, but they had fabricated. This does not lift up. Okay. So this is stationary to, um, basically it keeps this look at all times. And that's why the fit and finish on this is beautiful, but it does have a full red spray and bed liner in the inside of the bed but it's also been done in the same material that all the seats have been done because this truck doesn't see weather okay <laughs> this, this is pro and it is on coilovers all the way around um you you could hop in this truck and drive it anywhere i've drove it about five miles just kind of cruising it around and stuff but this is really a show truck it's is beautiful. Honestly, yes. And what is the price now for the 72 Cheyenne Super 10? On this truck, $90,000. $90,000. And, you know, in today's market, and if you were building this truck, I really think you would have well over 150 plus in this truck. I'm not going to disagree <laughs> there at all, everybody, because yes. that, is a, that is a sweet price. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not here because, you know, I'm getting paid to do anything like that. I'm just here to give my personal opinion. Yes. And with the trucks, I've been doing so much research on it. So that is a good price to get something that is just everything has been done. Yes. It's full frame of restoration here Correct. with those wheel sizes, that engine, custom interiors. It's yeah. It's it's not. Uh, the, the reason we're talking about the prices as well is these are not astronomical prices. Correct. You're not saying crazy prices just to get people in the door so then right. you can negotiate them down. These are realistic prices. Yes. Yep. That's what, you know, we, I want to appeal to everybody. It's what, you know, one of our values here is that we want to be real and, you know, and I've been in this market for a very long time of understanding what cars cost to build and 
I'll be honest with you, it's a whole lot cheaper to buy one already done, make small changes to it, yes. <laughs> and, and it's a whole lot faster instead of waiting, you know, however long it would take somebody, you know, year and a half, two years to take a not so pretty truck and turn it into this where you make a phone call to me and you can have it tomorrow. So, you know, that makes it nice too. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yes. So okay, the T-Bird. The T-Bird, 1957, uh, obviously convertible. It does have both tops. I've got the hard top for it, and it has a soft convertible top tucked in behind the seat. Um, it does have uh, BFG wide whites on it. Um, this car was a concourse restoration car done back many years ago. I don't know a whole lot of the full history on this car. Um, we have had this car, I think, somewhere around the four-year mark, somewhere in there. Again, this kind of belonged in the collection before we ever started the uh, selling process here. And um, What's the engine thing? So it, everything is stock. Every bit of this car is completely stock, put back to how it would be 1957. There's your power brakes over there. Um, it does have what they call power steering, but it's basically a power assist unit that is uh, kind of like a hydraulic shock that mounts. And that's how Corvettes were back then, things like that. But steers great, stops wonderfully, automatic car. Um, you know, it's a white with black and white interior. It's kind of an iconic. You know, when you think of 57 T-Bird, my mind either goes to the turquoise T-Birds or mm -hmm. a off-white T-Bird like this. And so... Uh, this is beautiful. Yes. And it's got both the tops, the soft top and the hard top. Yep. But I, I love the look of this car. For many years, we never removed the hard top off of it. And I one day just got the wild idea. I was like, let's just take this top off. And it changed the whole look of this car. And I was like, I don't want to put this top back on it. <laughs> and plus, they're kind of hard to see out of. I'll be honest with you. They have a very small little quarter glass window, like right in yes. here. And, and the top sit very low and stuff. So it just made this car so much more appealing in the looks. And when people come in, they think of, when they see this, it brings back a lot of memories for a lot of people that come in the door and stuff. So Wow, 57 Ford T-Bird. Yes. What is this price, the sticker price on Pr this? price on this car is $120,000. Okay. Yes. Um, the mileage? Do this car, hold on. Showing 12,400 miles on it. Wow. Beautiful. Yes. Before we get to the Corvette, okay. absolutely loved the Plymouth here. Okay. Now, let me turn on the, the fun, kind of unique stuff on this car. Now, this is what we think of when we say a show car. When we see cars roll into the shows and everybody stops and turns around and everybody yes. takes out their phones and starts taking pictures, this is the type of cars that are rolling down <laughs> Yes. That time. So, this is a 1936 Plymouth Roadster. Um, it is a all steel car. A lot of people do fiberglass fenders, they're doing fiberglass bodies. No, this is a real deal 36 Plymouth all steel. Um, a, uh, this car has a brand new 6.1 liter Hemi backed by an automatic. Just the engine and transmission package when ordered through Chrysler for this was over $25,000. Mm -hmm. um, a close friend of ours built this car, took right around three years. He did everything on this car, the paint, the bodywork, the wiring, even every bit of the upholstery. This is his first ever convertible top, which is amazing. All the interior is all real leather. Um, he made a bunch of nice little subtle changes to this car, but also not too wild all at the same time. Um, the gentleman he built this car for was die-hard Mopar guy, so he wanted a new Hemi in it, which at that time, the 6.1 was the largest one uh, when they started this project. Um, and he went with a new Challenger color, and he wanted to keep it as much Mopar as possible. He wanted something bright and, you know, kind of set it a little bit apart than every other street rod that's black or blue or red or anything like that. So this green is, you know, something kind of different. Um, May I? Oh, yes. 
please. Because <laughs> I have to show you guys. This was just, yes. yeah, this is beautiful. So it's got a tilt column. In the center console, the little sliding area down in the middle actually slides forwards. And well, it's... do you mind if I get in here? No, Why go right ahead. This? All right. All right. Slide on in. Wow. There's a lot of room. I mean, you yes. think of a roadster, but there is so much room. Yes. I mean, I'm not a very tall person, but I have so much room above my head. This is beautiful. Uh-huh. And this, the, this seat is amazing. <laughs> yes. So the seat actually slides forwards. It tilts. Um, so everything is a modern feature. It's all uh, power? No, it, it's actually all mechanical up okay. front. And up front. there's cables and things like that. Um, wow. It has AC, power steering, power disc brakes all the way around. It's had a uh, kicker stereo system put in it. Um, it's all push button start. If you'll see the little flashing light right here. So when you have the key fob and you get close to it, it lights up a solid red and you just touch it and the whole car will power up just like a new car does. Wow. Um, when it detects that the key fob is close correct. by, it's yep. going to go red to show you this is the button you need to press to get this baby yes. started. Loving the lighting in here. Yes. It's, wow. uh, it's got an electronic e-brake. Um, it's all push button gear selection, which is in the center console. If you want to slide that little part forwards. Yep. There you oh, go. Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. Look at that. And, and if you'll notice on the speedometer, this car has had a little over 500 miles, if I'm not mistaken. If you can zoom, if you can see it with the green yep, going. 582 miles. Yes. So that has been done since the restoration on this car. They got this car out. They enjoyed it. Wow. They enjoyed it, but at the same time, it looks like it's just been finished now. <laughs> yes. You know, and that some of the misconceptions about getting a really high dollar, you know, hot rod, street rod, muscle car, whatever you want to call it, is that you can't drive them, you're going to mess them up. You know, as long as you just keep in mind what you're driving, hey, it probably sits a little bit lower than your everyday driving you know toyota camry and everything else and wipe it down you can still enjoy these cars and they can still look beautiful just as much as this one this car's been done since 2020 so it's wow. you know we're at four going on four years since it's been completed and uh i love that that this i mean when you look at this you think this is something that's just trailered garaged right. show car you know at a show but you can drive this around if you mm -hmm. look after it yeah. It's not like you're going to spend so much money and it's just going to sit there and come out a few times of the year, but you can really enjoy this if you know yep. how to look after it. Exactly. Car. Yeah. <laughs> wow, this is beautiful. Now, to take the, um, the top off, yes. I'm noticing. Yep. So you would unscrew these and it just folds back. And it folds back. Uh huh. And so these would not like reset, they, they kind of stay you want to call kind of on top of the body, if that makes sense. Okay. Does it go into this little section back here? Part of it, yes, but it mm -hmm. will kind of stay upwards if... So uh, you'll still have that little bit of storage? Yes. Okay, well, speaking and, of storage, we do want to go and see the boot of the car. Yes. The trunk, sorry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this is very nice. This is very nice. And we'll get to the price in just a minute. <laughs> So, the trunk is also electric. Yep, it's coming up. <laughs> That's why I wanted to see it. So this car was actually a rumble seat car, so it did have a back seat. Um, the builder of this car basically converted all this and turned it into a real trunk space. Um, you know, and it's all beautifully finished out in real leather, the same carpet, everything. Um, the, this car uh, was featured, I don't remember the exact year, at NSRA for the Chrysler exhibit in uh, Plymouth and Mopar um, at Louisville, Kentucky. Um, this car has been shot for magazines. It's just beautiful. We did make a small change and I still have the other wheels that uh, they did have a steel wheel set up with the little uh, moon dish like hubcaps. And I wanted to do something a little bit more that I feel like 
fits the car. And so these are brand new ET five windows, um, 15 by four and a half and a 15 by seven, all brand new BFGs on it. They have zero miles on them right now. So I've not even got to enjoy these wheels yet and stuff, <laughs> but um, you know, just kind of change up the look, but whoever buys this car will also get the other set of wheels and tires so they can make, you know, they, they can change it up every few months if they want to, so. It's beautiful. I have just, you know, under 600 miles. Yes. 1936 Plymouth. 1936 Plymouth. And I will tell you this, the gentleman that built this car, um, he had a little over $300,000 in this car. So. I'm not surprised. Yes. So the price tag on this car is $200,000. Wow. Yes. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I mean, by looking at just the modernization that's happened on the inside, it's the keyless mm -hmm. startup, yeah. everything. And of course that engine as well. Yeah, it's, you know, there, there's nothing that's not been touched or, you know, basically, you know, You know, these kind of cars, they go on the auction blocks, Ace, and they, they can go up for a lot more higher. Oh, yes, very a much. A lot, lot more yes. higher. And yeah. That's what I want to emphasize here, that these prices are not astronomical, everybody. This is right. exactly what you expect to pay for this kind of a classic right. behind us. And, and then, like I said, if you're going to have it built, you're going to pay a whole lot more. And right not now you get the, all the labor as well. Right. Yes. And this way you skip wait times. You can make a few changes yourself or have someone do it. Make it your own car, just like we did with changing the wheels, kind of change up the appearance of it. And you're ready to go and do another show season and win all the awards. Wow, beautiful. Yes. Okay, now let's come a little bit more modern here. Yes. It's a bit of the later years. What are we looking at? 2013 uh, Chevrolet Corvette Grand Sport. This is a 60th anniversary Grand Sport. Um, this car has 37,000 miles on it. It is an automatic. Um, it has heads-up display on the windshield. Um, the previous owner added a Kenwood touchscreen radio, but it has front and rear cameras now. So when you go to pull up somewhere, you can actually turn on that front camera and make sure that you're not about to bump that front spoiler on anything because this car does sit pretty low. Oh, yes. Um, but other than the radio, everything else on this car is completely stock. Um, right around a year old Michelins that have been put on it, um, that alone... These Michelins right here run you anywhere from about thirteen to fifteen hundred dollars anymore on these tires. Um, this car drives great, and uh, I've actually got since the last owners uh, they purchased this car in 2020. I have detailed gas stops and uh, how much gas was, how many gallons he put in it, everything every time he put gas in it from the day that he bought it in 2020 wow and um yeah so it was it was pretty great when i found that booklet and stuff and that he kept up we with all we love that. owners that are yeah. just so detailed mm -hmm. and so passionate about the car because we know they've kept it really well yes yes this car was immaculate sitting in a climate con controlled uh, garage um you know the sad part is the the owner had passed away and his wife was like i'm not going to drive the corvette and stuff and so uh you know we were honored to be able to get this car and 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 i've put a few miles on it now myself just kind of running around and because it's a fun car to drive what is the current miles on this uh i think it's 36,800, so right at 37,000 miles okay Wow, look at this. <laughs> we'll just ignore that sound. <laughs> <laughs> and knows when the key is close. Well, the thing is, you gotta love that because you know that everything is working. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Especially with modern cars like yeah. this. She said that he loved to have this Corvette emblem. So this is just a metal sign and it's not mounted in the car or anything like that, but she said that he loved having this sign. And so I just wanted to leave it because that's what that gentleman liked. And so the next owner, he can have this sign and either hang it in his garage or keep it in the back of the car and stuff. But they kept it very, very nice, very, very clean. Um, 
I love that yeah. you guys always honour the previous owners yes. so well. Because these are classics and this is yeah. going to be a classic as well. <laughs> exactly. It means it has sentimental value. Yeah. And you guys recognise that here, so I do like that. Now, 2013 Corvette A, yes. what is the sticker on this? So, nice. st sticker on this car is $39,000. Um, you know, this is another one of those cars you buy it for me and I would drive it to California tomorrow and not think another thing about it. It's ready to go. All changes have all been done on this car. Tires are new. Um, it's ready. It's beautiful. 39,000. Wow. There's a lot more back there. <laughs> For those of you who did see the first video that we did here at Restoration Warehouse. Now we're here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're gonna go check out some more and see the prices and check out the mileages, the details, the information that you all demanded. All right, like I said, there is a lot <laughs> of classics here, Ace. There's a lot of beautiful cars here. Yes. Everything is all done. Let's start off with where you're standing. Okay, 48 Mercury right here. So I know a lot of people think of Mercury, they think of the 49, 50 big lead sled. So this one's a 48. So right before they changed the body style, everything like that. Um, great driver car right here. It does have a small block Chevrolet motor in it that appears to be a Mercury motor, which is pretty cool. Um, but it does have an overdrive transmission, AC, uh, disc brakes, over, or I've already touched on that, overdrive transmission, power windows, um, tilt. Another one of those, get in, drive this car. We've driven this car to North Carolina. We've taken it on many trips back and forth to Pigeon Forge. Um, does, I just put brand new Nitto tires on it, built specialty wheels. Um, you know, it, th this is a fun driver that get in, go to the car show, or just run around and take the family. And um, yeah, it, it's a great car, great color combination, something a little bit different. That's beautiful. Check this out. Here, we'll open up the, so you can see a little bit on the inside of this car. I love the silver with the maroon. So pretty. Yes. Power seats. Um, yeah, it, cruise control. Forgot to mention that. 1948 Mercury with cruise control. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of kind of odd to think about. Wow, these interiors are absolutely stunning, everybody. I hope the camera does it justice. And one of my favorite features of the classics is the headliner. Check this out here. It's done very well. It does have the electronic door poppers for because the door handles have been shaved, the trunk handle has been shaved. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay, what is the price for so this? So the vehicle? price on this car is sixty-two five. Great car, hop in it, drive it, enjoy it. Wow. Everybody has different tastes. <laughs> yeah. And we all know that people choose to either build or buy classics because of some kind of sentimental value. Yes. Now, I love this because the delivery vans are popular. I have <laughs> yes. seen so many delivery vans throughout my travels at the car shows. Yeah. And they always stop me. So what have we got here, Ace? 1954 Chevrolet sedan delivery. Um, this car has been done since, well, it ran in Super Rod Magazine in December of 07. Uh, this car, I believe, was completed more around the 2005-ish um, year. It's got a, right around 11,000 miles that have been put on it. This car, I know of for a fact, had been driven multiple times to Daytona Beach for the Turkey Run, uh, multiple car shows. This car was enjoyed. Uh, it was built locally here in Knoxville as well. Um, yes, it was built by um, Larry and PJ Burchett. Yes, exactly. And uh, the gentleman that um, had this car, he had it till we acquired it and he put all the 11,000 miles on it. Uh, we've put a couple hundred miles on it since having it. And 
again, I just put brand new Nitto tires on it all the way around. Uh, we went through, replaced uh, bushings in the rear suspension, check brakes, did a bunch of stuff, uh, you know, just kind of freshened up the car a little bit. Um, you know, all the AC works, it's got overdrive transmission. Um, that is a 350 Vortec heads. The builders of this car, I actually do know them personally and I know they do amazing, outstanding quality work. So just the fact that they've had their hands in building this speaks a lot of the quality involved and we can see that right yes. here, even just in the interiors. Check it out. So much room and I mean everything is just all leather throughout it from the headliner to the side panels. Yes. Wow. This has been done beautifully. We've got a paper here. Can I look at the paper? Yeah. Is that the price currently as well? Yep. $65,000. There we go, 11,000 miles, 54, sedan delivery, two doors. So, and I love that that's still there. <laughs> yes. I it, like that. Again, honoring the uh, gentleman that this was, this was his car before we purchased it. And uh, around Knoxville, anytime that we take this out, they're like, is that the Jim McMichael's car? And we're like, yes, yes it is. So uh, it's very well known around us. And uh, so we like to uh, honor that. You know, some people might want to get that and remove and put something of their own, personalize oh. it. But at the same time, it's a conversation starter. Exactly, yeah, because we get people that don't know the car and they say, well, what does this mean? And so then we kind of explain a little bit that, uh, you know, Jim used this as an advertising car and things like that. And, um, and like I said, drove it all across the th Southeast. There you go. Yes. Now we love the Camaros. Yes. They're always popular. And especially a Timeless. black and white stripe 68 RS, hidden headlights. Um, again, very much a car you hop in, drive, uh, you know, chance of rain. Well, that just means you're gonna be doing some cleaning. <laughs> it's uh, had the electronic uh, headlight covers uh, converted to Detroit speed instead of the vacuum operated that would give you what they call the lazy eyes when these wouldn't open all the way. Um, car has had AC put on it, um, four wheel disc brakes, uh, retro radio, so it's got Bluetooth when you get in it, great sounding stereo. And what year is the Camaro? 68. 68. And what's the engine here? 350. 350. Beautiful. It looks so good. The black, the yeah. stripes, and it has been the, driven. Yes, yeah. Uh, you know, we've had this car out and been, I'm going to be honest, we've been caught in the rain, windshield wipers work, and guess what? The car did not melt when it got wet. So <laughs> it's okay. They still wash and they still clean back up, and, and we had smiles and, you know, enjoyed it. It is a bucket seat. Oh, so all the interior so cool. has been you know, redone to original specs, but it does, like I said, have the retro sound, retro radio, so you got Bluetooth. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a just a nice, fun car to drive. And is this the miles here? Yes. Is that 37,000? Yes. Wow. You know, I can still smell the leather. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, beautiful, 68. What is the price on this, eh? So the price on this car is $69,000. Wow, it's beautiful. Like I said, four-wheel disc brakes on it, um, you know, but there's something you don't see, so then it doesn't, you know, take away from the original, like where it would have drums in the rear and discs in the front, things like that. So this car is very much a get in it, drive it, enjoy this car. Enjoy it. Yes. Now, one of the ones that I remembered was the 57 Bel Air. Yes. So before we have a look at the beautiful silver Tri-5, let's have a look at the Oldsmobile. All right, let's have a look at the Oldsmobile. All right, so what you're seeing here is a 1970 Oldsmobile 
Cutlass SX. So the SX is basically a version of a 442 and a Cutlass put together. What you get out of that is some of the styling features of the Cutlass and some of the performance from the 442. It's got a 455 big block with a uh, Hurst dual gated shifter, automatic, uh, what a lot of people call the his and hers shifters. Um, some of the other styling features, like what a 442 would have, is this hood right here, the dual scoops on it, oh, um, nice. the hood releases, you know, it's, it's pretty. It's a very... It's very pretty. And I know some Oldsmobile people that... You wouldn't think it's an Oldsmobile by looking at the hood. Right. It, it's it's kind of got, you know, a lot more performance look to it. But that the SX is uh, not a car that you see too often, and especially in this color combo. Um, this car, I've had this car up in the air. It has never been off the frame. And it's probably got some of the most spectacular looking floor pans I've ever seen in my life. Like, they are absolutely perfect. Rockers are perfect. I have seen zero signs of panel replacement um, that's including inner outer quarter panels or rocker panels or any of that it all appears to be original welds original everything um, the the other we can really see nice that thing. even here inside yeah. the engine bay we can see traces where it would indicate that it is all original yes I mean this car is um, what I do believe is that they have repainted the engine in the car mm -hmm. because the pictures that I documented of the car while it was up in the air and show kind of paint flaking and it is old paint on the oil pan and around the engine on the lower side mm -hmm. and transmission looks like it has never been out of this car. There is so much that, uh, you know, we try to provide as many photos, as much information as we can learn about the car because some of these cars that we do acquire don't come with any information. So we have to figure it out ourselves. And then some come with a lot of documentation like the Red Chevelle. Yeah. And uh, this car right here is just amazing. I would almost bet that all the interior is original in this car. The way that the seats are kind of worn in certain places, I don't believe that they have been replaced and then worn this way again. Um, I think this car was just in amazing shape. Um, another thing that we've kind of seen a indication that I hope nobody gets onto us, but the floor mat. <laughs> the floor mat right around the gas pedal has a bunch of little indentions in it. And if you kind of notice that, it kind of indicates like a female driver had it that was driving in heels. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's the only thing that kind of makes the sense of the yeah, way. Be careful what you say. Uh, exactly. That's why I'm not trying to say, you know, <laughs> but it, it's the only way that we can kind of indicate that. I well, mean, the floor mats are very hard. Uh, they're not a soft rubber, so they're not reproduction floor mats. And just the way that everything kind of appears at how nicely this car is kept up kind of makes it believe that it is a little bit more that it was probably a... Uh, a female driver. Yes. Well, I mean, it, it is in very, very good condition, everybody. It, yeah, I mean, this car is really amazing. It drives great down the interstate, um, and even on bias ply tires. Uh, I mean, this car will run 65, 70 miles an hour, no problem at all. Um, it, it, it's a really, really nice car. It's beautiful. It smells so good in here, everybody. It might have been a female driver. <laughs> <laughs> This is beautiful. Yes. Yeah, th this car is, and it is a factory air, factory uh, power brake car, uh, factory power steering car. So it's got a bunch of options for a 1970. Doors shut great. Everything seals up nice. Nice. Another indication that it may not have been torn apart. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> when everything fits so well. Yes. So, price tag on this car, $65,000. Yep, there you go, everybody. And what is the mileage again? Uh, on this car, let's see here.
it's showing 72,717 miles. Again, that, another indication that it has it, not been restored, adding to its Yes, I, I would pretty well uh, indicate that's probably original miles on this car, especially if, uh, you know, if you're interested in it, like I said, reach out to me at restowarehouse.com or our number is 865-409-5407 and I'll be happy to send you the undercarriage pictures of this car and really of any of the cars that we have here if I have them and if not, I will get you undercarriage pictures. Thank you, Ace. Now we love the Bel-Ace. <laughs> yes. 57. So this 57 is a little bit different. Most people put small blocks, big blocks, LS motors. This one's got a little bit different engine in it. It's got a 1963 409 425 horse motor. Um, the gentleman that we acquired this car from had purchased this car with no engine, no transmission. It had already been painted. And uh, he went to his little local speed shop and they had this motor literally sitting off to the side and he started acquiring about he's like you think we can put a 409 in that 57 and they're like well yeah we can do that and so uh, he had this motor completely gone through um, it does have larger cam in it um, it's a lot more than 425 horses now it does I was just gonna say yes you? Um, but it has had power steering uh, power brakes AC that works great um, it's got a 700 R4 overdrive automatic transmission, four wheel disc brakes. We have driven this car to uh, North Carolina for a car show. I drove it myself personally for three days straight back and forth to the rod run every day driving from Knoxville to Pigeon Forge, which is a ride around 35 miles each way. Yep. So I was putting about 70 miles a day on this car running probably shouldn't say this, about 75, 80 miles an hour. Like in this car, runs cool. I was running the AC. It's got power windows, uh, retro radio, power seats in it. Um, I mean, it, I was treating it like a modern car is what I was doing, driving it back and forth. And you know, stuff. you say that because with the Tri-5s, from what I have noticed is these are drivers. Yes. People love to drive them. They like to drive them to the shows. They're not really yeah. made for trailers. Um, even the ones that are done over the top, even like this one right here, I've always seen them driving. They want to enjoy yep. it. So if they've got any a 55, 56 or a 57, they always want to drive it. Exactly. Um, it's got tilt wheel, like I said, power windows, power seats. Those um, seats look very comfy. They are very comfy, actually. <laughs> um, it has coil over rear suspension. It's had an aftermarket custom built nine inch um, from Fab 9. It's got inch and a half axles. Um, this car is really set up very nicely. It's got uh, brand new American Racing wheels on it, brand new tires, wow. brand new exhaust system. I just had all that stuff done. Full disc brakes all the way around, and it's got rack and pinion steering. I forgot to touch on that part. So okay. it steers really nice. This is a fun car to drive. You know, before we talk about the dash, I have to comment again that the leather inside this is very different. <laughs> yes. Um, I know good quality leather when I see it and <laughs> feel it, and that's why I wanted to sit here. Check this out, everybody. It's, yeah, it's. I chose to sit in this because it looked very comfortable. Then, you know, it's not very yeah. flashy. No. The seats are not very flashy, but they are so comfortable. And, they're, and the quality here just speaks for itself. Yes. And um, looking at this, it looks more like a male driver, especially with the seats. They're very <laughs> wide, they're yeah. very comfy. Um, you know, the armrest is nice and high up here as well. Male driver for sure. <laughs> I wouldn't mind driving this at all, yeah. but just from the looks of it and the beautiful silver, it's beautiful. Yeah, they call this Inca silver. Inca silver. Yes. So everybody, the dash here as well, 1957. Now this is a hard top post. post. Yep, two door post. Two door post. Yes. It's beautiful, it's comfortable, it's ready to go on the road. Yes. What are we gonna pay for this, Ace? $65,000. $65,000 for a 1957 Bel-Air. That another one of these cars that I wouldn't hesitate to get in and drive about anywhere you'd want to go. Wow. 
See, again, that price, I have been looking at the prices of these cars, everybody, is right exactly what you'd be paying if actually that is pretty low yeah. for a 57 Pele, because that's one thing I always keep my eye on. Yeah. That is not bad at all. With everything that this car's got going for it, it, yeah, it's a very wow. nice car. 65. I didn't expect the price to be that. <laughs> I thought it might have been a little bit more. I was thinking maybe in the 85. Well, anybody that wants to pay more, we will be happy <laughs> to let them pay more. <laughs> wow, it's beautiful. Okay, well... Happy New Year to everybody watching. <laughs> yes. Hope you've all been enjoying the channel. Got some Christmas decorations still here. So. Yeah, th this is our parade car this year. So I actually had a Christmas tree that we would go to a parade. I'd throw the Christmas tree up and we would light it up. It had candy canes all the way around this car. I had uh, where you could drop down the tailgate area and then we had a bar that we put up so people would ride back here and wave and everything. And so we drove this car in multiple parades this past Christmas season. So still haven't got all the Christmas decorations off of it because we just I hate hope, I hope to join you this year. Yes. I was out of we town. Would, yes. Usually I'm always out of town during Christmas time, <laughs> but um, that would have been really swell to see. So what you're looking at is a 1966 Chrysler Town & Country. Um, this car is just a fun, fun car. We have had a blast with this car. We've taken it to many car shows, hauling people. We'll, we'll load this car down with their six or eight people and cruise and enjoy. It's got a fully built 383 aluminum heads, a very large cam in it. Um, we just did brand new power brakes with an electronic vacuum booster. Um, it's had all kinds of work done to it. It sounds amazing. It's got American racing wheels. This is a brand new wood grain wrap on the side of the car. Um, we, we love our station wagons having wood grain. It's just kind of like our signature thing. If we have a station wagon, it gets wood grain put down the side of it. Don't care what it is. And this and, is a wrap. Yeah, and it, it's a wrap. It looks and so cool. uh, our wrap guys are amazing. And I told them I didn't want a wrap that appeared to be just brand new, nothing. So I said, can we kind of dull it down to make it honestly look like it's a little bit faded because this car does not have the perfect paint job, no nothing. This is a fun car. It's got rub through the paint. It's got rock chips. It's got fun times. It's got memories is what this car has. It really does. The perfect family yeah. car. So it's just fun. Great stereo in it. Um, you know, it's got power steering. Like I said, power brakes. You can haul everybody, or you can fold all the seats all the way down and use this as a truck bed if you really want to. Wow. And, uh, but if not, it is a nine passenger car. Nine passenger car, <laughs> yes. okay. And you Town got electric and back window uh, <laughs> on the tailgate, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just cool. Did you say electric window on the tailgate? Yeah, so the, the back tailgate here is all electric that rolls up and down. And you control and, it up at the yep. front. And then, uh, and then when you roll it all down, this drops down. And this weighs a lot. But this is how you get into the car right here. And it's actually got little steps on the bumpers to help you get in the car. And Wow, does that have seat belts here in the back seat? Uh, I believe so. I think they're just tucked in where we keep folding it back and forth. Okay. Because yes. if they didn't have seat belts, then the, um, I mean, trying to understand American law. Yes. It's not against the law to, uh, to sit in the back and drive this without seat belts in the back here if they weren't designed with seat belts. If they were not designed with it, they do not have to have them, at least in the state of Tennessee. Okay. I do know that for a fact that if, if the car did not come with it, and you don't have to have them right now. Mm -hmm. But we would recommend but that we put do, some seat belts you, you in You do there. have seat belts. I, I'm about positive they are behind that seat, but we've, we've been folding this back and forth so many times that, uh, yeah, I think they've just fallen down in between there. Okay. Okay, well, this perfect family car. Honestly. Yes. It looks good. It's going to sound great driving it down. What is the sticker price for this? So on this car, 32.5. 32.5. Yes. Nine passenger car. <laughs> Nine passenger car. <laughs> right here. Wow, that's awesome. Brilliant.
All right, let's continue along. And thank you, Ace, for showing me such a variety of different cars. <laughs> that, that is something that we do have is a variety of a little bit of everything here. You know, everything from the family hauler <laughs> to, you know, when you just want to go out and have a lot of fun, you and your wife have a date night, this is probably the car you want to hop in right what here. What have we got here? Okay, so this is a 1970 Plymouth Duster. It's got a 340. Um, what else is crazy? It's a straight shift car but it's a three-speed manual straight shift. Ah. So quick little history, 1970 uh, was the first year that Mopar had offered a standard transmission. And when I say standard, I'm not referring to manual drive. I'm saying standard as in they did not charge you to either have an automatic or to have a four-speed. So prior to this, um, you had to pay extra to get a transmission. Mm -hmm. So. This was the first year that they offered a no charge and a three speed was a standard. Well, you know, most people probably back then were upgrading to the four speed or an automatic. So actually the three speed is pretty rare and it is a true documented numbers matching three speed and motor. Everything for this car is numbers matching. Wow. And this car again has been done somewhere around the 15 to 20 year mark. Um, and like I, I'm always going to say, they're some of my favorite cars, uh, the older restoration, because they're, by now they start showing all the little issues or anything else. This car has held up amazing. Love the red on red. Yes. And that is true for this year of, and uh, documentation that it is a true red on red car. Fun car to drive, sounds great, looks good. We actually took this car to the, uh, let's see, what was it called? The Mopar show here in Knoxville yeah. and won a top 50 with this car. And uh, a lot of people were bragging on the color combination and the how well this car looks. As well. the, or, the originality, the fact that yes, it has so much yes. numbers matching parts, yeah. Wow, this is beautiful. You know, people like to collect classics. Mm -hmm. And when you've got something that's numbers matching, something yeah. a little bit more on the rarer side, it, it's always appealing. So what yeah. are we looking at the price tag for this? So the price tag on this car is $55,000. There you go, everybody. 55000 yes. Yeah. And I guess this is going to be the last one that uh, we're going to kind of talk about today. Okay, what have we got? So what we've got here is a 1962 Plymouth Fury. And uh, you know, the Furies over the years, they kind of started growing a little bit more in popularity of this body style. Um, some people love them. Some people think that they're the ugliest thing that you've ever seen. They're different, that's for sure. They, that, is, that is one thing, they are very different. This car has the perfect stance, wheel and tire combo, engine combo, um, you know, so there, there's not much you can hate on this car with being a black car and to show how slick this car is. Um, this car was built in Texas and uh, actually knew the previous owner of this car that had this car done. He told me that when this car was stripped that the only little rust piece that they had to fix was up here in the cowl and it was because there was a just a nest of uh, pine needles and stuff had gathered up and put a little bitty rust hole. He said all the quarter panels, none of that had been uh, replaced or had to be patched or anything in this car. And the underside pictures of this car will prove every bit of that. And. Uh, so this car is extremely nice and, and it's really honestly hard to find a convertible that doesn't have water damage from the top either leaking or things like that over the years. And so, you know, normally having a floor pan replaced or something like that is, is not a big issue. This car has had nothing done to it. Wow. And, and keep in mind, everybody, if you do want to see more pictures, detailed footage, um, pictures of the undercarriage, because I yes. can't show you now definitely email Ace and reach out at Restoration Warehouse because he'll be able to get that for you. But yes. I want to see the inside. Okay, so the, the, in, the inside just as impressive as the outside. All red leather interior. It's all real leather in this car, all done by Paul Atkins. 
Um, it is a push button automatic car over there on the left side of the dash. Um, it's had classic instrument gauges in this car. Actually here in the center, right here, this actually folds out and there's a touchscreen TV to uh, play the stereo system. Ouch. Hold this. Okay. Let me get in. My shoes are clean, Ace. Oh, you're fine. And you're telling me that this 62 Fury has got a touchscreen TV inside it, it. It does, yes. Okay, so what do I do? Well, I would have to have the power on and the okay. key on and stuff, but uh, you turn the key on and hit the open button with a remote, and oh. that will actually slide out, and it folds up a TV screen. Wow. <laughs> yes. When was this restored? How long ago did you say? Uh, this car, I think, has been done somewhere around 10 or 12 years. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it was really happening in its time. Oh, yes, yeah. To have all that and the push button start as well, because that would have been so popular. It would have been the. Yeah, yeah, your push button automatic, well. like gear selector, is pretty cool. Um, you know, in 1962, uh, the, the dashes on these were pretty advanced and things like that. But now, obviously, that touchscreen radio happened when this car was restored about uh, 12 years ago uh, when Paul did all the interior. Um, wow. They did the convertible top, all the trunk area. Um, There's a lot of paperwork back here. There, well. there is a bunch of paperwork. I think I have the original uh, window sticker, bill of sales, things like that um, this of this good. car. Love a a bunch, <laughs> a bunch of documentation with this car. Oh, sorry, gave you a little shock there, but I do love the bench seat as well. Yeah. it's just so comfortable with all the modern features. Like you said, convertible. I just want to show everybody that there is a lot more information on this. Yes. If you're keen, let's have a closer look at that engine bay. So the engine that you're going to see in this car is from a 1970 Cuda. So this is a 440 with numbers matching six pack. Uh, all the, car the carburetors are all numbers matching. Um, this motor was acquired a little over 20-ish years ago. Um, the gentleman that had this car built. He read in the paper one day, 1970 Cuda engine for sale. And he said, that's all it said. So he drove to a gentleman's house and there's a 70 Cuda sitting outside. Mm -hmm. And there was that engine just sitting on a tire in the center of the garage. And he said, why did you pull the motor out? And the gentleman's son kept getting in trouble with the law. And so he told him, he said, if you don't stop getting in trouble, I'm gonna pull the 440 out and we're gonna put a 318 in it. <laughs> And that's exactly what they did. So he bought this engine. Good on him. <laughs> took it to his house. He said, I threw a blanket over it and pushed it up underneath the bench. And it sat there for, I think, eight or ten years before wow. building this car. And they were trying to decide what engine to put in this car. Wow. And he said, well, I guess it's the best time to put a 440 in one. So 440, automatic. Um, it does have power disc brakes on it, power steering, AC. Um, you know, th this car has great, I love the steel wheels, hubcaps, the big BFG radial TAs on it. It's got a great stance to it, um, you know, but the suspension really hasn't been modified too much. It's still running leaf springs in the rear, factory coil springs in the front, um, or I'm sorry, the torsion up front on this car. So nothing has been crazy modified. It drives great down the road and it's got plenty of power. It's very different as well. Like yes. you said, the Furies are different. Just looking at the body lines yes. and the back. I actually really like the back. Yeah. Just want to show that once again, everybody. It's, it's beautiful. It's very different. So price tag on this car. If you were having this car built today, you'd probably be somewhere in the two, 250 range, if not even more. Price tag on this car is 125. 125. I have the big open back window. Yes. You can just clearly see those beautiful custom interiors. And and I mean, and really, I mean, you can tell how nice this paint job is and how well this car was taken care of. And um, and I want to think on the mileage on this car. Since the restoration has been done. It's had 122 miles put on it. Wow. In, like I said, about 10 to 12 years. It's brand new. It's ready to go. It is ready to go. It is ready to go.
You know what, everybody? I hope you have enjoyed that. I hope that's answered some of your questions with the beautiful cars, the beautiful classics here at Restoration Warehouse. Ace, you have been awesome. Well, thank you again for coming to visit and, and filming everything that uh, we've got to offer here right now. Absolutely. And you know, another thing I do want to emphasize is some of you reached out to me and said there was a few cars that you were looking for. Ace can help you with that as well. Yes, we help people source out the car that they've been looking for. We can then inspect it, make sure it's ready to go, give you an idea of, hey, we feel like you need to fix this or upgrade this. And uh, we've got a uh, full-time mechanic that runs this place that uh, he's got, I think, 47 years of experience. Um, so, yeah, we, we've got the knowledge here. Got the knowledge. You can find something if someone is looking yes. for it. You can check things out for them. Yeah. They just need to give you a call. That number is 865-409-5407 or reach out to restowarehouse.com. Find us on social media. Uh, we're on Instagram, Facebook. Um, you, you can find us anywhere about. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I hope you all have enjoyed that. And if you have, hit the subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. And like I said, I'm always watching out for the comments and your suggestions. Here you go, everybody. Take care for now. Thanks, Ace. Thank you again.